Welcome to Piper. This is Piper uh, Peterson, and she is being baptized this morning. And today, this beautiful gown, help me to get this right, this was made for her by her great-grandmother from her grandmother's <clears throat> wedding dress. Did I say that right? So just this beautiful, beautiful gown. So welcome, Piper. And Parker, older brother, and Brayden, we're happy to have you here too. So uh, welcome to each and every one of you, Jessica and Kyle, our parents, and also our sponsors today, Katie Zander and Cody Peterson. If you'd like to follow each of the words, you're welcome to. Those responses that we'll ask from the congregation will be also posted on the screen. Um, but if you'd like to turn to the words, they are on page 227 at the very front of your hymnal. And we'll follow the column on the left-hand side of the page. This is what we believe happens in holy baptism. That God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us, a, gives us a new birth into a living hope through this sacrament of holy baptism. We believe that by water and the word of God, that God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We believe that we are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, that we are anointed with the gift of God's Holy Spirit and sent out in mission for the life of God's world. Jessica and Kyle, called by the Holy Spirit and trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Piper baptized into Christ? If so, please respond, we do. As you bring Piper to receive the gift of holy baptism, you are entrusted with gifts and responsibilities to live with her among God's faithful people, to bring her to the word of God and his holy supper, to teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in her hands the holy scriptures, to nurture her in faith and in prayer so that she may learn to trust God, to proclaim Christ through word and deed, and to care for others and the world that God has made, and to work for justice and peace among all people. Do you promise to help Piper grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please respond, we do. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Piper in the Christian faith as God empowers you by his spirit, and to help Piper live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church if so, please respond, we do. we do. I ask you then to profess the faith that we share in our Lord Jesus Christ. The words will appear on the screen. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 
and let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with, his holy, with God's Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you have set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that Piper, who is here washed in these waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I'll ask you to hold Piper over the font. Piper June Peterson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, <laughs> and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a good girl. Goodness. Piper, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Piper with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of your wisdom and understanding, the spirit of your counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. In the book of Matthew, we read that Jesus tells us to let the light of Christ that comes to us in baptism to shine before others so that they might see the light of Christ and the love of Christ within us and so come to know that light of Christ themselves. Thank you. So I will pass this to you. <laughs> And uh, sponsors, every year on this date, if you would call uh, the, the Petersons, I was going to say the Parkers, if you would call the Petersons and, and remind them to light this candle in honor uh, and anniversary of Piper's baptism, remind Piper as she grows in years of who was here and the promises that you've made as sponsors, as, that her parents have made as parents, and that we as a congregation have made to support them uh, in these promises that they have made today. So you can extinguish the candle and we'll give that to Kyle and Jessica to take home. And um, we also have a, a special gift for you, Piper, and we want you to use it uh, to remind you of God's love for you and our, our congregation's love for you. And this has your beautiful name on it, Child of God, West Beacon Prairie, today's date, May 7th, 2017. And I will give that to your dad that uh, you might be reminded of our love for you as well. Let us welcome Piper into our family of Christ, into Christ's body with a round of applause.
to stand as you are able, begin our time of worship with some words of reflection. Please respond with those words that are highlighted. God, we believe you have called us to unity, but often we have isolated ourselves from others. God, forgive us for the times we have turned. God, we believe you have called us to live together as one body. God, forgive us for the times we have created division within your worldwide church. God, we believe you ask us to look, listen, and learn from others. God, forgive us for the times we have ridiculed and attacked those with different viewpoints. God, we believe you ask us to accept and seek to understand all who are called by your name. Forgive us for the times we have offended you by failing to love others as we do ourselves. God, we believe you call us to be one, even as you are one. Forgive us for the disunity we have harbored and make us one. Please take a moment. Offer up your own thoughts, your own prayers, your own time of reflection this morning. God and creator of all humankind, your son Jesus Christ prayed that your church might be one even as you, our God, are one. May you renew our minds and rekindle your love in our hearts so that by the power of the Spirit we may find the oneness that you intend for us. God, may we see your oneness in our need for unity. God, may we see your threeness in our need for community. God, may we see you in our creativity, our need for diversity. God, may we see in yourself our need to love one another. Amen. Please remain standing. We'll sing together, all the earth. name. 
Please be seated. Our scripture is before us. Thank you, Diane, for sharing our words from Acts this morning. The Acts and the Gospel lesson are in our insert this morning. Words are on the screen. Thank you, Diane. Our scripture reading for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by making many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord.
a small piece of Bible trivia to start us out today. At the beginning of Acts, our Acts reading, the writer says, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did. And the writer of Acts is believed to be the same writer of the book of Luke. So Luke wrote Luke and Acts. Luke was his, the first book that Luke wrote. <laughs> and he was a physician. So there you are. If you ever get called upon and uh, jeopardy, uh, <laughs> Luke wrote Luke and Acts. The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then Jesus led them out as far as Bethany, which is a city, a town of about two miles away from Jerusalem. And Jesus lifted up his hands. He blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped Jesus. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were con continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Before diving into my sermon today, my apologies to Michelle, whose hands you are also, capable hands whom you are also uh, left in, <laughs> always. She's shaking her head. But you know as well as I do that she is very, very capable and a wonderful gift to us as well. <laughs> Thank you. So before we dive into our gospel reading today, just a, a few moments to bring us up to speed again on what has all that has happened just prior to Jesus ascending into heaven. His body was beaten, broken, and placed upon a cross where he was put to death. Jesus rose from the grave on Easter morning. And you'll remember on that first Easter morning, according to the Gospel of Luke, the women arrive at the tomb to prepare Jesus' body for its burial, and they are met by two men in dazzling clothes. We presume these two men to be angels. And they proclaim to these women, he is not here, but he has risen. Well, the women are bereft, of course, that Jesus' body is not in the tomb, and they are confused that morning by the angels' words. They go and they tell Jesus' friends, his other disciples, what they have heard and seen at the grave. And this is all too much for the disciples, two of them at least, who take that the quickest road out of town later that Easter morning. They are on the road to Emmaus as they are walking along and a stranger appears to them. And the stranger says to them, what are you talking about as you walk along the way? And as they break bread with this stranger later at table, they realize that Jesus is the stranger among them. And they beg for Jesus, the risen Jesus, to stay, to remain with them. But Jesus cannot stay. Part of God's plan for reconciling all creation unto God is that Jesus will ascend into heaven and that God's spirit will be poured out upon all people. According to the scriptures, which the people of Israel thought were to be fulfilled in the coming of the Messiah, God was, coming, was going to return for only the people of Israel. But Jesus says, if I ascend into heaven, my spirit will come. And God's spirit will not only call, gather, and enlighten the people of Israel, but all the nations of the earth will be blessed. So that is where we see uh, the reason for God, for Jesus ascending into heaven. 
for not only this small group of the people of Israel, but so that all the world will be blessed by the Holy Spirit of God coming to the earth. So as we enter our scripture passage for today, Jesus is reminding his disciples once again that his ascension into heaven, his going to be with God is part of God's plan to bring healing and reconciliation and forgiveness to not only the people of Jerusalem, but all people of the earth of every age. I can only imagine what the perspective of the disciples might have been on that ascension day. Imagine their reaction to his announcement that he is ascending into heaven. Stay here, he says, in this city of Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. I can only imagine the disciples saying, what? You are going to leave us now? We've watched you die upon the cross. You've risen from the grave. And now you want us to stay here and wait for what? What promise of the Father? It would be a lot to take in, wouldn't it? Perhaps it is because a new school, another school year has passed. We are celebrating graduations and looking to new beginnings. But this passage always reminds me of my first day at college. In the fall of my senior year of high school, Upon learning of my acceptance to a college that was 350 miles away, I went there because I loved the college, but also because they had a program, the only program of its kind in the Midwest, in which I was, of which I was interested in, which was deaf education, teaching students who were deaf. Of course, my life didn't go that way, as you know, but that is where it began. And so moving to a town, a city, 350 miles from home seemed like a really good idea the fall of my senior year of high school, right? Moving from a town of 350 to 350 miles away seemed like a wonderful idea. And as wonderful as home was, I was ready for a new beginning. The following fall, my freshman year of college, my parents helped me pack up, move into my dorm room, and I started to realize for the first time as we were unpacking, that I was truly going to be on my own for the very first time. I was away from my family for the longest that I would ever be, in a city of, in which I was not familiar, had only been to once, and I was living with someone that I had never met. Not unlike a situation that many of you have experienced, coming from Norway to stay with Lee and his family. <laughs> As we were walking to my parents, as I was walking my parents to their car, my mom said something that helped me as much as I think it helped her. She said, as soon as you go upstairs, do not go into your empty dorm room where your, where your new roommate has not even yet arrived. Go to your neighbor. She looks like a nice girl. Start talking to her. I think you'll be friends. She seems like a really nice person. And my mother was right, of course, as she always, almost always is. <laughs> my roommate had not yet arrived, and my mother was right that going back into my dorm room would be somewhat daunting. So I stopped at Carla's door, and I knew within moments that we would be everlasting friends. My mother's encouragement to talk to my new neighbor reminds me a little bit of Jesus' words to his disciples today. Stay here in the city, Jesus says, prior to his ascending into heaven. Jesus says to stay here, to wait for God's Spirit, not because God's Holy Spirit would not come to people in other cities, not because it would only come to the people in Jerusalem or the village of Bethany, but because there was already a community there. There was a community of followers of Jesus Christ, who had already gathered. They had a place to worship. They had support of one another. And Jesus knew that without him, they would need this community. They would need the support of one another. And it would be into that community that the Holy Spirit would truly be felt, would truly be heard, would truly be seen and lived. And this is one of the reasons that as often as possible, we as the church hold baptisms and confirmations, 
marriages and funerals, and welcome new members on a Sunday morning in worship, in community, rather than in private. Because God's Holy Spirit shapes us to be community. As Christ's body on earth, we, the church, make and support one another in keeping promises to live out our faith. We sing and proclaim the faith on behalf of those who are hurting. We serve one another and help make decisions when others are unable to do so. We equip one another in every part of our faith lives and journeys. As people called, gathered, and sent by God's Spirit, we are never sent out on our own to make promises of faith. Whether surrounded as we are today or on the, alone on the front steps of a college dormitory, the very Spirit, the very living Spirit of God is always, always with us. As Jesus departs from his disciples, remember that he raises his hands in blessing. These hands have borne the nails of the cross. They are hands that are now raised to bless and forgive. Those hands of blessing were raised to forgive all that had been broken between us and God. Jesus' ascension to heaven was part of God's plan to redeem the whole world, to bring healing and reconciliation through God's Spirit, working through our broken hearts, our broken hands, so that we may, as we may best do as human beings, serve as Jesus served, love as Jesus loved, fight injustice as Jesus did, welcome as Jesus has, and be courageous and bold through this gift of faith, to be his heart, his hands, his body on earth. God knows that we will not do this perfectly. Jesus knew that we would have times of fear and doubt after he ascended into heaven. Times when we would forget all that he has taught us. Times in which we would long more for the things of this world than for the things of God that we would seek the things of this world more so than the things of God, and sometimes we would wind up feeling empty, lonely, afraid, wondering if it's all for naught and if we have been abandoned by God. For this reason, Jesus says, I will send to you my Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit of God that continues to call, gather, and enlighten us the Holy Spirit that shapes us into community, the Holy Spirit that teaches us and gives us the courage to speak, to try, to love, to fail, and try again, all in the name of Jesus Christ, each and every day. Because this is the baptized life that we live. It is messy and it is imperfect, but sometimes, as you know, it is so rich in grace and mercy that it nearly takes your breath away with its beauty. Today we celebrate the life of God's Holy Spirit, bringing new life into this community, the new life and breath of God through Ashley and Corey and Michelle, whom we receive as members of our community today. We never step out in faith alone. The richness of life comes not always in those rote and scripted times, but sometimes in the unscripted times. When we step out in faith, the times in which we are held in the strong and capable grasp of our living Lord and Savior, and we jump in faith. For this we say, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I bet we're going to sing a song. Would you like us to stand? We have to stand for this song. We have to stand for this song. You heard it there first. <laughs> the splendor of Clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, darkness cries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. I'll break.
I'm going to invite our new members to come forward today. Rest of you, please be seated. So Ashley, Corey, and Michelle are going to come forward as we are, have the blessing of receiving you as members today. You can stand over there beside Pastor Julie. So welcome to you. I have had the great pleasure of meeting with these three individuals and getting to know them a little bit better, so I have the privilege of introducing them. This is Michelle Myers. You might know Michelle if you're from Vespi. Um, <laughs> she has lived among us. You have three children. Uh, she is a wife and a mother and works at Logistics Health Incorporated in La Crosse. She has also served us at Borgens. Uh, but that is no longer part of your resume. So um, yeah, she's a busy lady and we are so happy to have her with us. And Ashley Gabrielson and Corey Mikshowski. Corey is a brother to Cassie Olerud. Yeah, <laughs> they're saying we can see that now, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Ashley and Corey, I have the great pleasure of marrying them on July 1st. They are uh, becoming married on July 1st. And then also another huge transition in their lives, Corey is being deployed in August. Uh, I want to say with the Army Reserves, is Air Force, excuse me, the Air Force Reserves uh, in August. And Ashley has just finished her first year of teaching in La Crosse. Corey has just uh, wrapped up his uh, degree program at UW Platteville in engineering. So they also have lots of transitions in their lives and we are so happy to have them uh, be part of our community as they celebrate and go through some transitions in their lives too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Some words to welcome you here today. So as you have expressed interest to join officially this community of faith, on this day we ask, do you intend to continue in the covenant that God made with you in holy baptism? And those promises are to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in, in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, I ask the three of you to say together, we do, we ask God to help and guide us. We do, we ask God to help and guide us. Thank you. People of God, all of you here today, do you promise to support and pray not only for Corey and Ashley and Michelle, but for all of us, for one another, in your life in Christ? If so, say, we do, we ask God to help and guide us. We do, we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, you cleanse us from sin, you raise us to eternal life. Continue to stir up in Corey, Ashley, Michelle, in all of us, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let's welcome them with a round of applause this morning. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of all things seen and unseen. If you had insulated yourself from the pain of the world, then your name could not be love and our condition would be without hope. So we thank you for coming to us in the form of Jesus, to living among us, for proclaiming your grace and your love, for ultimately dying for us and giving us the gift of the Spirit which draws us into one another and to share that love. So on this day we pray, let your healing love be known this day by all who suffer ailment of body or distress of mind or agony of spirit. We especially pray for Evelyn, all those who are upon our hearts and minds. Please reveal your compassion and together we pray, O loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your intimate love be known today by all who feel forgotten or lost, all who are walking in the dark valley of despair. 
We also pray those who walk in the midst of grief for the families of Carol and Delia, of Ron and Joseph, of Wayne and Marilyn. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your fierce love this day redress the wrongs of all who suffer exploitation, injustice, abuse, neglect, violence, or unwarranted imprisonment. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your nurturing love today encourage those who are gathering resolve to make tough decisions, take on new responsibilities, or break free from some bondage. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your reconciling love today gather together the separated Christians, make them aware of the fellowship and mission of the one universal body of Christ. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. Let your inspiring love this day rejuvenate pastors, priests, prophets, all who walk with the call, all who lead us, all who guide us. We ask that you be with Pastor Julie as she enters into a time of sabbatical. Be with her in her rest. Renew her for the days and journeys ahead. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness to all. And on this weekend, help us remember those who have given their lives in defense of freedom. We give thanks for all who have served. And we pray for those who are currently serving this day. For Lane and Eric, for Maverick and Megan, for Autumn and Brandon, for Dale and Corey, and so many others that we know. Please reveal your compassion. Loving God, bring wholeness for all. Thank you for hearing us, most loving God, and with the whole body of believers in time and eternity. We want to love, praise, and serve you today and evermore. So through Jesus Christ, your true Son, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We'll receive our offering this morning. I thank you for all your gifts. Our kids are welcome to come up. Uh, Michelle has some cups, and you can collect. Uh, they'll come around and collect some change for our mission and support efforts. Thank you, kids. Come on up.
Please stand as you are able. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ forever strengthen you, keep you in his grace and peace. Amen. Pastor Julie, come on up. We're going to be joined here by Michelle and myself. Um, we have a prayer here in the bottom of our... Come on here. We have a prayer here in the bottom of our bulletin on an order of service. It's not on the screen. But we just want to send Pastor Julie with our prayers today. Um, this summer she will have been with you for 12 years. And... Um, uh, This, the, these people love you, and, 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 and I have lived with her for many years, but all these 12 years, well, I've only been here as a pastor for three, but she loves you, and that was evident from day one, and I know you all know that, but it's important to hear that. So, uh, Kurt, our president, he's going to lead us in this prayer. Michelle and I will be with you. Let us pray. On behalf of the entire West Bikunhuri congregation, it is with thanks and happiness to you, Pastor Julie, that we were able to send you on this sabbatical during the month of June. It is certainly a well-earned and deserved sabbatical. Please join me in the prayer at the bottom of your bulletin in the order of service. Gracious God, we thank you for the work of your servant, Pastor Julie Wolman. Bless and preserve her during this month of sabbatical. Guide her and give her what is needed during this time. By your Holy Spirit, be present and so that she may journey with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Thank you. Julie. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then the one final announcement. It is fitting that on Pastor Julie, as we send her off on sabbatical, that the directories have arrived. <laughs> so, as you leave worship this morning, Heath and Tammy Jolts, Tammy is our chairperson of fellowship and evangelism, they are down at a table in the narthex um, with the directories. For everyone who has had their picture taken or submitted one, have a picture in the directory, you get one for free. And so just go up to that table, and they'll mark you off, and they'll give you a directory. If they did not have a picture taken, they can still get one. There's a cost. Is that true? Is that how this works? Okay, we're going to work out those details. So, um, <laughs> but they'll be around for a while. So, I, I think that if, you, if your address and your name is in the back of our directory, you should receive one. And uh, also our new members who may not be pictured or have their address there, of course, there you, you receive okay. one as well. So, okay. All right. So, uh, so, Corey, one per household, okay? Uh, one per household. Um, and, yeah, if your name's in the address in the back, take one. Um, we'll, 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 we'll be fine with that. But for those of you that had your picture taken, for sure, uh, make sure you grab one today. All right. Let's stand as we are sent out today. Please respond with the words that are on the screen. As people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we will now return to the world. Go out to share the story of faith, the story of life with the world around you. 
We share the faith in word and in deed, in speech and in action. As you go out to give a living witness, as you go out to testify to God's love active in the world, go knowing that God goes with you, sharing the laughter and the hope, the fears and the tears. Our sending song, all the people say amen. Let's sing. Peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Share that peace as you go this day. <laughs> 